Yes, it's always good to talk to, uh, to a, 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 an A-League uh, striker and a, a player at the moment who's Whose just come fantasy off. fantasy would be to make the World <laughs> yeah, Cup that's squad. True. Well, we won't ask Jamie McLaren from Perth Glory, uh, who's on the line now, just come off the track. Uh, welcome to the Four Diego's, Jamie. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah, our pleasure. It's uh, Rodrigo Rodriguez. You've got Vinny Venezuela, Warren Diego and uh, Carlos Alberto Diego. Hey, you've, you've spent a bit of time uh, overseas with uh, Blackburn Rovers, about four years or so. Um, yep. You're now back in the A-League. How are you finding it? Yeah, really good. Uh, you know, it's a tough it's a tough league. I always knew the A-League uh, was getting better every year. Um, and I just thought uh, at the end of my four years, it was a good opportunity to come back and play first-team football. Now, Jamie, it's uh, Carlos, uh, a good mate of ours, a Fort Diego's Vinny Grella, who, you, of course, you got to know there at Blackburn Rovers, once told me that there was a kid at Blackburn Rovers who's a bit of a star, and uh, keep an eye on this guy, and he mentioned you, uh, Jamie McLaren. And I didn't know much about you at the time because you were obviously kicking goals for fun in the youth uh, and the reserve competitions over there in, uh, in England. And all the talk was that uh, in making the decision to come back to Perth that you actually had... Um, some, uh, some, a chance to maybe join Norwich and a few other clubs, maybe Derby and a couple of other teams in the championship. Why, why um, knock those offers back when it could have been just a normal progression of your, normal, of, of your career over there and come back to Australia instead? Yeah, look, Vinny was, uh, was a very good mentor for me at, at Blackburn. Um, as soon as I got there, he, once he found out there was an Aussie in the academy, he uh, got himself down, introduced himself, and uh, we got to be good mates over those four years, we got really close. Um, and, yeah, to be fair, I did, have, I did have some offers, but I just kind of wanted first-team football. I wasn't, I wasn't guaranteed that at Norwich or, or Derby. I, I had to break myself in. I was going to be a development player like I was at Blackburn um, in the reserves and, you know, trying to break in. And uh, once I spoke to Ali, Alistair Edwards at Perth, he said, look, I'm going to offer you first-team football. Um, obviously, I, I had the World Cup in the, in the off-season, um, so I just wanted to get that out the way and then uh, weigh out my options. Now, uh, Jamie, Vinny Venezuela here. Did uh, Vinny Grella offer you any particular bit of advice, any pearl of wisdom that uh, has served you well? He just said, stick at it. He just said, because, you know, he's, he's done the whole, you know, leaving home at a young age, and he just said, grind at it, and, you know, the, all the first-team experience you can get, uh, the better. And, you know, you, you, I have got that with Perth, and I'm really enjoying myself at the moment. Jamie, I'm just wondering... I'm interested in the differences in, in football from place to place. And obviously, back Blackburn playing championship football. What are the differences between, say, the A-League style of game and, and playing in the championship over in England? Yeah, look, there's, diff- there's obviously different styles of play in, uh, in both of the leagues. You know, you have the, the teams like uh, Brisbane who like to play with the ball and they're very attacking. Um, but then if you look at championship clubs like... Uh, Barnsley and stuff like that, who who are just route one, you know, get it down the pitch. So it it helps. Both leagues are different, but um, the A League standard has definitely risen in the last couple of years, and I'm I'm very uh, impressed about it. Now, Jamie, of course, uh, you've had to sort of do it a little bit tough. Uh, in the early part of the season because you've been the main striker there at Perth Glory. Of course, their star on their books is uh, Shane Smeltz. Will we ever see a situation where you and him will be a twin prong uh, (laughs) strikers up front? Or or is there always going to be, if he's available, he'll be sort of at the pointy end and you might be in in and about running around him instead? Yeah, look, I think we've we've talked about it. And obviously, Smeltz, unfortunately, um, is injured at the moment. But uh, no, there definitely is a, a chance for us to play together when he is fit. Um, he's, he's, he's established himself in this league. He scored loads of goals, and um, let's hope when he does get fit, we can we can link up very well together. You've struggled with a little bit of continuity with your team with injuries, and it's fair to say that you've got a, a number at the moment. Obviously, Gallus and Smeltz, but um, for me, Sydney has been, I think, the most impressive new player in the competition this season for mine. He's he's one of those guys that can be a human highlight package in terms of skill and that sort of stuff, but. His overall game, his willingness to get forward, his ability to link up, you know, with you guys up forward and to score goals has been a real highlight for you guys. Tell us a, a little bit about him. I get the impression that he'd be full of tricks off on the training paddock as well in terms of the way that he plays. Yeah, he definitely is uh, one, of, one of our exciting attacking players and it helps the way we play. We like to get out wide and, and uh, expose their fullbacks and, and get overlaps and uh, Sydney fits into that perfectly. Um, he's the sort of player that run, runs at fullbacks and gives them, honestly, a headache. And, you know, he does it at training and he, and he does it during games. 
Um, so he's definitely a, a very good signing for us. But, you know, unfortunately, he, he has got an injury at the moment. and I, I don't think he'll be featuring. Um, maybe not this week. Now, Jamie, you are a, a proud uh, uh, young man from uh, a fantastic football factory in Sunbury in Victoria. <laughs> Uh, I've actually played a bit of football in Sunbury at Sunbury Football Club. No doubt, no doubt, you've been uh, sort of hung around that club yourself over the years. But uh, tell us about your journey from uh, from that uh, fantastic little gold mine of a place in in Sunbury all the way to Blackburn Rovers when you first got over there. Yeah, look, Sunbury United was uh, was the roots. I started off there when I was uh, when I was five. Uh, I, I was lucky enough to get a move to to Green Gully. Uh, my father was the coach there, and we. we coming into Super League. So I played the under-13s, 14s and 15s there where um, I was lucky enough to get picked in the state squad every single year. Um, and then also I was lucky enough to get picked for the Victorian Institute of Sport and I played a season there. That took me up to 16. And then I was offered a trial at Blackburn and uh, once I went over to the UK, I, I basically didn't come back. So that's, that's, that's it in a nutshell, really. Now, now, Jamie, tell me the truth. When you first went over there, I mean, obviously you're a talented young man uh, making all those state teams and uh, sort of uh, just improving all the time here in Victoria. But when you went over there, did you match it with the kids equivalent to your age immediately or did you have a bit of catching up to do? Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, look, I went over there as a, as a winger, uh, you know, with, uh, basically I thought I had pace and uh, I went over there and I had these, these quick... Dark fellas, you know, just absolutely tearing fullbacks to shreds. So I kind of changed my position. I, I still had the, the technical ability to, to shift in and play alongside up front or as the number 10 role as, as it is now. Um, so I, I kind of basically had to shift positions to, uh, to fit into the English style of play. Jamie, now just remind me, was Sunbury yellow and black? Was that their strip? Yeah, that's the old, the old yellow and black shirt. Yeah, that's the one. I remember playing against him too. Hey, um, he remembers I'll... playing against you. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. I would have played against you, your great uncle or something <laughs> like that. Hey, I was going to ask you, with William Gallus coming to to Perth, has how has how have the people of Perth uh, taken that uh, that that signing? We we saw that with Del Piero and Heskey that there was a bit of sort of excitement. Has it been the equivalent in Perth? Yeah, look, we when we travel and stuff, you know, we've always got people coming up and saying, oh, look, is William here, is William here? But uh, unfortunately, he's been injured and he hasn't been able to feature in uh, in some of our games, which, you know, the fans are probably a bit upset about. But, you know, we've, I think he'll be back in the next couple of weeks um, and hopefully we do need him. We do, after losing Pantelides, I think uh, we do need that sort of defensive structure and, and also Thwaiti's doing exceptionally well. So it'll be good to get Will back. Uh, Jamie, uh, Adrian Zara, who we know well from his Melbourne days, um, scored a goal and decided to do a backflip followed by an, a tuck position. It was just a, it's just a selfish Six way, I think, of really <laughs> celebrating a goal and sets an extremely high bar for other goal scorers at Perth with regards to what you're going to do to impress. I'm just wondering, gymnastics, has that been part of the training routine for you personally? Because... I would say as a striker, you'd be fairly competitive. And if you'd score, you want to match that excessive acrobatic performance that Adrian put on for the, um, for the third goal against, um, against <laughs> Wellington last week. Yeah, look, Adrian, Adrian being one of my best mates of the team, um, you know, I thought I had a decent celebration against Melbourne Hart when I jumped over a little <laughs> hurdle. But uh, Zara, Zara took it to a new level and uh, that backflip, we, he does it all the time. He does it in training. Um, so we, we, we expected it, so it's nothing new. You've got to fight back, Jamie. You've, you've got to fight back. Keep, keep the boy in his box because he's, he's got a big personality and his head's only going to get bigger and bigger and bigger if you keep letting him do that. Even though I did notice Michael Swate do the disco dance on the weekend. <laughs> he did too. Mate, mate, there was a few rascal celebrations. Uh, even if you saw Sydney's one, he realised he pulled his hammy halfway through. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Jamie, apparently uh, Archie Thompson has... Uh, Sent uh, <laughs> Zara a, an email saying back off the, uh, the show stopping um, <laughs> goal celebrations. Oh, I don't think anyone's going to steal Archie celebration. That's uh, that's one that's been around for a while. So now, yeah. Jamie, Jamie, in, in closing, mate, tell us about the tattoo sleeve. It's it looks fantastic on you. I've got to say, but uh, nearly every young player in world football's got one at the moment. Uh, would that be true for all the boys, all the young guys? Because uh, there's a fair few of them these days. Uh, they're at Perth. And by the way, 
if Daniel De Silva hasn't got one yet, I don't want him to get one, okay? I want him to be original and not get a tattoo sleeve. Uh, yeah, look, uh, the tattoos, they started off uh, when I was in England. Um, it's all family related and, you know, I guess it's, it's always something as I've always wanted and um, I'm surprised you blokes noticed, <laughs> to be fair. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't know if it's a trend or whatever, but um, I've always liked them. So, yeah, I guess that's, that's my main reason. Oh, it's definitely a trend. Uh, the Diego's haven't got one. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jay, Jamie, thanks very much for your time. It's uh, great to talk to you. Great to talk to a Sunbury boy. Yeah, and, Sunbury uh, boy, yeah. Absolutely. And you're yeah. really doing some great stuff over there with Perth Glory, mate. And uh, we're keeping a very close eye on you. We hope Ange Postacoglu is keeping an eye, a close eye on you as well. And by the way, uh, if you do score this weekend in Melbourne, <laughs> uh, on Friday night in Melbourne, make sure you run to the nearest camera and say, that's for Sunbury and that's for the four Diego's, okay, Jamie? <laughs> I was going to say, did you want? Did you want to give me a celebration just in case? Well, or? can you talk him through one of yours, Warren, when you're playing? <laughs> no, I didn't have much of a celebration. Look, you blow us a kiss, <laughs> <laughs> mate. I'll be copping a lot of the, off the boys. I'll be thinking that's to my girlfriend. Okay, that's, <laughs> but we'll know. We'll know. Just, just like a just an ole with a, a bit of a you know matador kind of <laughs> yeah. bow. That'd be nice. No, no. Look, Jamie, I would like you to whip out a. a, a <laughs> Uh, Finish the sentence. Well, no, no just a, bo- a bouquet of flowers to give to the corner uh, post because uh, I feel that uh, Archie Thompson's just going to, you know, yes. to, to fourth base <laughs> too, too quickly. Too soon. <laughs> Oh, oh, it's quality, it's quality. Yes, on that note, Jamie, thanks for your time and uh, we'll uh, look forward to seeing you on the weekend. Guys, appreciate that. Thanks for that.